Hey there, I'm Kieran Galaxia, and welcome to another guide from The Gamer. Today we're looking at one of the last decisions in Mass Effect, namely whether you should save your bosses in the Council, or leave them to die and focus on the main threat, the Reaper Sovereign. So let's set the scene. You've just arrived at the Citadel, the arms of the giant station are closed, and you are left inside with Saren, the game's big bad, and the Reaper Sovereign, the game's exceptionally bigger bad. What's wild is some people question the existence of Reapers. I mean, come on, it's right there, and it's pretty big. Anyways, before you get to the decision, you gotta fight towards the Citadel Tower, and then encounter Saren himself. Here, you can either fight him, or help him see the light and error of his ways, which in turn makes him- Oh! Oh, well, uh... Huh. After this, you're prompted to head up to the control panel to open up the Citadel's arms, and let the fleets engage Sovereign. One of your party members will tell you to open the arms, while the other tells you to open a communications channel. The second you open that channel, you'll hear from the Destiny Ascension, the Council's flagship. Their engines are offline, shields are failing, it is a bad time for them right now. After this, Jericho will chime in, telling you the fleets are on standby, and he'll ask whether to focus on the big Reaper ship Sovereign, or to focus on saving the Destiny Ascension. This moment here is the decision point giving you three choices. Save the Council, let the Council die, or concentrate on Sovereign. I understand that the Council for most of the game can be seen as a total pain, and if you choose to let them die, or do a cheeky little save to see what it's like, there'll be no judging here. But the consequences of your choice here have massive ramifications for the series. So let's take a look at them. So let's start with saving the Council. If you choose to save them, the Alliance fleet will fly in and save the Destiny Ascension, taking severe losses doing so. After this, they'll then move on to attack Sovereign. Doing this will give you a nice gain in Paragon points, because hey, that's pretty nice of you. Once Sovereign's been dealt with, the Council decides that humanity has earned its place on the Council, and the Salarian Counselor will ask who you think deserves the job, between Anderson and Udina. If you don't feel like making that choice, you can always leave that one to the Council. In Mass Effect 2, you'll be granted an audience with the Council once again, and they'll reinstate your Spectre status after the events from the opening of the game. Lastly, in Mass Effect 3, the Alliance fleet will be a weaker war asset, which may sound like a loss, but to make up for the numbers, you'll also have the flagship, the Destiny Ascension, as a war asset, which is pretty neat. And on the other side of things, here's what will happen if you select Let the Council Die. The Alliance ships will come through the relay, and instead of helping the Destiny Ascension, they'll just completely ignore them, leaving them to die at the hands of the Geth. Once the arms of the Citadel are open, once again the Alliance fleet will focus all fire on Sovereign. Doing this will net you an increase in Renegade points. At the end of it all, Udina plans to form a new Council and this is where things can get interesting. If your Paragon points outweigh the Renegade, Udina will form a multi-species council, led by humanity. If your Renegade outweighs your Paragon points though, then the council will be a humans only ordeal, which uh, that's pretty awkward Udina. After this, you'll have to choose either Anderson or Udina to become the head counsellor, or once again, you can leave the choice up to them. In Mass Effect 2, the council won't want to chat, and they won't reinstate you as a Spectre, unless you elected Anderson to be in charge in Mass Effect 1. Also, all the other races on the Citadel will not like you. Can't think as to why. In Mass Effect 3, you won't have the Destiny Ascension as a war asset, but you will have the full strength and might of the Alliance fleet. So that leaves the last choice on the wheel. Concentrate on Sovereign. For all intents and purposes, this is the same as letting the Council die on every level, with the consequences being nigh on identical, except you'll gain less Renegade points for making this choice. Because, well, it was the Alliance's choice to ignore them this time, right? Eh, whatever helps you sleep at night. So that's our guide on whether you should save the Council or let them die in Mass Effect. Hopefully with the info we've given you here, you've weighed up the consequences and made your choice. But, like I stated at the start of the video, if you're going to save scum killing them just to see what it's like, we won't judge. At least, not openly. If you enjoyed this, then please do drop a like on the video. If you want to see more from us, do go ahead and hit subscribe, and maybe hit the bell too while you're there. And if you've got any games you want to see guides for, 
let us know in the comments below. For guides, features, reviews, and more, do go check out thegamer.com. And hey, we'll see you in the next one.